The Kusapi is perhaps one of the most fearsome ghosts in Fatal Frame 2, but who exactly is he, and how does he tie into the story? Let's take a look. The Kusapi initially appears partway through the game and, if he touches you, is an instant kill. All you can do is run from him, and this sets the stage for what will later be a terrifying and fearsome battle. It's not until the very end of the game that you finally get to battle him for real, and as it turns out, the Kusabi is the game's final boss, at least on normal difficulty. Once again, a single touch from him means instant death, and to make this fight even more difficult, he can only be harmed with a fatal frame or zero shot, similar to Kirie at the end of Fatal Frame 1. A lot of lore about the Kusabi, his role in several rituals and who he really is, is tucked away throughout the game, so let's unravel it all and take a deep dive into the story. First things first, the word kusabi in Japanese literally means wedge. This is a massive hint as to the kusabi's role. A kusabi is created through the cutting ritual. The cutting ritual is, in essence, a stopgap to give Minakami village more time to prepare for the crimson sacrifice. It's through this cutting ritual that the village can buy more time to prepare for the proper ritual that will seal the hellish abyss located beneath the village and hopefully stop the repentance from spilling forth. It's believed that the first cutting ritual was performed by a head priest long ago. In this case, the priest cut himself over and over, drawing out as much pain as he possibly could while still alive before throwing himself into the abyss. This, the villagers discovered, didn't entirely seal the abyss, but it did give them more time to prepare. So, the cutting ritual became a sort of emergency backup. Not always necessary, but there if needed. The sacrifice created a wedge that could briefly suppress the abyss, and the greater the pain suffered, the greater this wedge or kusabi, would be. Over time, this ritual became more elaborate and honed, and it was carried out in the rope room inside the Kurosawa house. After the initial head priest, the sacrifice, or kusabi, was always limited to foreigners from outside the village. These outsiders would be lured to the village, then placed in a prison cell in the Kurosawa house. They would then be forced to take part in the cutting ritual and, if they survived, tossed into the abyss as a sacrifice to hopefully calm it down long enough to carry out the crimson sacrifice. If, however, the kusabi died during the cutting ritual, then it would all be for naught and a new victim would need to be found. In case the names cutting ritual and rope room aren't enough to get your imagination going, this particular ritual involved stringing the kusabi up by ropes and then cutting them bit by bit to draw out as much agony and pain as possible. It was necessary to keep the sacrifice alive the entire time and they had to stay so until they reached the abyss. Naturally, not all survived. Those who died before reaching the abyss were buried in the underground passageway which is the path leading to the abyss from the Kurosawa house. Now, with that out of the way, who is the Kusabi that we battle in Fatal Frame 2? Who was the final sacrifice that didn't quite go as planned and now stalks the village endlessly with the rest of the spirits without rest? He is revealed throughout the game to be none other than Makabe Seijiro, a prominent folklorist and friend of the Camera Obscura's creator, Dr. Aso himself. You can find 12 notes written by Makabe throughout the game, and these detail his exploits before becoming the final Kusabi. He describes being welcomed warmly by Kurosawa Ryokan, head of the Kurosawa family, and he remarks on the village's interesting traditions. They don't have a village chief, and they lead a simple life, practicing old traditions. Makabe is especially interested in the folklore passed down in the village related to the Gate to Hell, aka the Abyss. In time, he comes to learn of the strange rituals carried out in the village to appease this Hellgate. 
He also starts to cotton on that perhaps the villagers are being so kind to him because they have ulterior motives. As such, he decides to send his assistant, Munakata Ryozo, out of the village before anything bad happens. Munakata, if you're able to keep your confusing Fatal Frame family tree straight, ends up becoming Hinasaki Miku's great-grandfather. If Makabe hadn't sent him away that day, a lot of things would be different, that's for sure. Before long, the villagers actually start calling Makabe Kusabi to his face. He also learns of other outsiders coming to the village before him and becoming ceremonial sacrifices. He's then jailed and it becomes apparent that yes, the villagers plan to sacrifice him as well. The cell they keep him in also stores numerous documents, and it's here that Makabe learns more about the hellish abyss and the various rituals related to it. Interestingly, as the time for the cutting ritual approaches, Makabe doesn't seem afraid, but rather intrigued. He notes that if the gate to hell, known as the hellish abyss, really does exist, I will be able to see it with my own eyes tomorrow. Even if I am to be thrown into it as a sacrifice, I am at least happy that I can see this forbidden place at last. Another note written by Makabe that can be found in the Japanese Zero Akaicho Complete Official Capture Book also mentions Makabe was fully aware of what was going to happen when he sent Munakata away, but in the end, didn't go with him because he wanted to see the Hellgate for himself. In the end, he let himself become a Kusabi to grab a glimpse at something that nobody alive had ever seen. As a folklorist, this would undoubtedly be the pinnacle of his career, of his entire life, even if that meant his death immediately afterwards. The abyss sucked him in and he was unable to escape it. Makabe's cutting ritual was actually a success and he survived. His cut body was tossed into the abyss and that appeased it for a brief period of time. However, the crimson sacrifice that followed failed and it was this failure that led to the repentance. The hellish abyss unleashed darkness upon Minakami village and from that darkness, the Kusabi, Makabe and Kurosawa Sae the final twin sacrifice, returned. The darkness enveloped the village while the Kusabi slaughtered any in his way. He killed almost the entire village and those who escaped his grasp eventually went mad and died anyway. It's interesting to note that before the final battle with him, when you see the Kusabi, his right arm has been cut off and is tied to his body with rope. This seems to indicate that his entire arm was cut off during the ritual, and yet he survived. Because his whole body needed to be thrown into the abyss, they simply attached it to him with the same ropes that they used to hold him up. Gruesome. Of course, the Kusabi is exercised in the end by Mio with her camera obscura, and the day is saved. Well, depending on what your view of saved is. His battle, like many other boss battles, is notable because his touch is an instant game over, even if you have a stone mirror. You cannot allow him to touch you at all, and you can only kill him with a fatal frame or zero shot. A Kusabi also shows up in Fatal Frame 3, but due to his different design, this one is unlikely to be Makabe, but instead a former Kusabi, who haunts the manner of sleep in Kei's dreams. He is also a pain in the butt, but much less fearsome than Makabe from the second game. And that is the lore and history behind the Kusabi, one of the final bosses of Fatal Frame 2, and one of the most prolific ghost serial killers in the series, with a whole village to his name. What do you guys think about this character? Who was your favourite enemy from the game? Are there any other characters or rituals that you'd like to hear more about? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.